So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and today I'm going to talk to you about how I'm making an adapter plate that will allow you to install bees in any size hive, 8 frame, 10 frame, or nucleus hive. And it works with the Colorado BVAC, which is what we're showing right here. And it also works with the Everything BVAC. So I'm starting right off with a piece of wafer board, also known as oriented strand board. And I just trace the outside of the Colorado BVAC 10 frame because the Colorado BVAC comes for 10 frame only. What happens when you have an 8 frame box or even a nuke? Could you install your bees then? Not without some kind of adapter plate. So that's what I'm going to show you. 20 inches by 16 and a half. That's a standard length Stroth outside box dimension. And I ran a straight edge from corner to corner to find the center. Now that I found the center, I'm going to use this compass to lay it out. The diameter of the five gallon bucket, same for a six or seven gallon bucket, is 12 inches. So I'm gonna go a little beyond that because I want the bucket to set down inside this. I don't wanna make it the same size. Now you could just put your bucket right on here and trace the outline, but then you've got to center it up. I'm using a Forstner bit here in my drill and I'm gonna drill a starter hole. Once that's in, of course, I'm gonna use my jigsaw here. And that's the one that's set for all kinds of wood. And I'm going to hold my phone in one hand while I cut with the other. Because I can multitask or not. It didn't come out very good, so the lines are a little crooked. But uh, if you're not filming, you'll make a much better cut than I did. You can see it's a little wavy here. And this is half inch thick OSB. So, by the way... This isn't going to work very well, but I'm going to show it anyway. This is the Everything BVAC. Look how much it sticks through the hole. And I have a swarm inside, and I'm going to remove the screen cover here. And uh, then I'm going to invert it onto this Langstroth 10 frame box. It's a hive that uh, the bees departed from or just died through attrition because they were queenless, and then they got robbed. In fact, there's robbers inside right now and so what i did is i just put the plate on so i took the outer cover off inside there's those robbers look at them they're wondering why we're looking in on them they've been uh removing honey from this hive for a while and the beekeeper was not very vigilant that would be me and uh, so i need to put a swarm in here and we're going to drive out the robbers with the swarm but I'm also going to show you how this plate works, or doesn't, because it needs some modification. Look at the space, the diametrical clearance around that food grade bucket outside rim. I had to pull the screen out, and of course, most of the uh, most of the swarm were hanging from the screen. So I set that in front, and I put a medium hive box in front so that it would be in direct contact with the landing board because I want the bees to go in. Somewhere in here is the queen, and the queen's pheromone is what's driving all those bees to collect themselves together again. And we see the edges of the OSB, and this is one of these things that uh, a lot of people don't have the patience for. I do. You could just try to dump them all out of your Colorado bee vac, or by pulling the plate out, or you could just shake them like crazy out of your everything bee vac, but there's chicken wire in there, and they don't want to come off of the chicken wire, so it's a game of patience. But what I'm doing is putting the bucket on top and letting some of the bees go down inside the hive, get on those frames, and then the pheromone starts to spread around. And then, of course, like magic, the bees that are on the outside just all go in. Look what's happening here. The bees that are part of the swarm are converging on this robber. This is one of the bees that unfortunately was inside at the time of the install. And these bees just don't like it at all. So what are they doing? They're biting it. They're uh, teaching it a lesson, so to speak. And uh, all it was doing was going inside to get the leftover honey from the previous occupants. There's a slow motion showing just kind of how they treat a bee that they're trying to drive out. They could sting it, but they're not. They're just biting it. And uh, marking it too, by the way, when they bite a bee, they can mark it with a pheromone that lets other bees know that this person is uh, not welcome. So here's the diameter again, and you'll notice that bees can come and go through the top. So I kind of have a problem there. I need to fix that. The other thing is it's sitting directly on the frames inside the box. So I'd like to correct that too. 
look what's going on under here. Lots of bees still in the bucket, but a lot of them have gone down into the hive. Very carefully put it down here so you don't smash a bunch of bees. We don't need alarm pheromones going out. And uh, now I wrapped parachute cord, of course, around it. This is every beekeeper should have a bunch of parachute cord around. You never know when you're going to need it. But that closes off the airspace there. It closes the light off as well. And encourages the bees to go down below instead of congregating around that vent. So again, inner cover. Watching these bees, drinking coffee, wasting time, waiting for them to all go into the hive. And then eventually we're going to have to take the bucket off. And uh, they moved off that inner cover there, so that's done. Now we just set the bucket alongside there, trying to make sure it's in physical contact with the hive you want your bees to go in. And since I think the queen is probably down inside there, uh, they should leave the bucket. And those that are on the face of the hive should also move in. And we see this Nasanoff gland going, see their little abdomens in the air. And they are drawing each other in to where the queen is. And in they go. Now the bees are thin enough inside the bucket that you should be able to see if the queen's in there. If she is, you want to make sure that she finds her way into the hive that you're trying to get your bees into. But we did learn a few things with this uh, shim that I made. It's not thick enough. The other thing is uh, we make observations while we're sitting and staring at bees like this. And bees are coming from all over and joining them. This is something that I've learned over several years of staring at bees and playing with their pheromones is that foraging bees that are out and about when a swarm is moving in and you have a lot of workers on the landing board as is happening here and they're spreading that pheromone into the air, they will pick up unrelated bees. In other words, bees from other hives will just join them here because they happen to be moving in. I don't know why they do it, I just know they do. And this shows it a little better. Uh, and this happens, of course, when the swarm is moving into the space that they've decided. Remember, I know I put the bucket on there, but by letting them move in on their own, it's a little better than shaking them in. First of all, you don't disrupt them at all. You don't need protective gear anymore. And uh, if they just walk right in, they tend to stay. Or if you shake them in, force them in, and you put them in on your own, then uh, they could also leave later. Now this is a shim that I'm making. I like to recycle old hive equipment. So I'm going to cut this one down. I'm going to make a spacer now so that that bucket will sit farther in. But I kind of came across a surprise here. When I made the cut, look what happened. I cut into a channel that was made by a carpenter bee. That's right. That is a female carpenter bee right there and uh, didn't cut her in half, miracle of miracles. Instead, uh, when I made the cut, look, I opened up the gallery, the chamber that their eggs are normally laid in. Look how clean and smooth they've made that into a three quarter inch piece of pine. That is amazing. So I can't say that I feel bad about it. Carpenter bees are not my favorite, but uh, that was an interesting thing to come across. Now we step outside because I know you want to know what happened out there and the bucket's empty now. So we can take that back in the shop and the bees did move into that hive. So they've got honey, they've got drawn comb, they should build up fast. So now I created a spacer. So I just cut down some two by material and uh, I'm going to reinforce that because I want the bucket to be able to sit deeper. And I'm also going to create this adapter so that I can use this on any hive size. Of course, I'm using tight bond three. It's my favorite. So I cut that radius out uh, so the bucket can sit in there. Looks good. And now we won't have that space around it. No more need for the parachute cord. And we have wafer board. Now this is a work in progress. Obviously, I'm just feeling things out. I have lots of scrap wood around. This wood right here, someone gave me in exchange for some photography that I did. So I like the barter system. And I'm going to use it uh, on my adapter plate now. So what I'm doing is I'm shaving it down because I figured if I make it small enough for a nucleus hive, it will also work on an 8 frame or a 10 frame hive. And I'm just going to glue these up with Type Bond 3. And by the way, those that are wondering, that's Redwood. They had this in their barn. 
Redwood had been in there. This is over 40 years old, or it's been in storage for 40 years. So I was really happy to get that. And uh, just gluing it up, I'm going to put the pieces together, of course. Remember, work in progress. I might have a final version that is much smoother looking, but it just works out the parameters, and I'd also like to fill those gaps in there probably in the future. But now we have something that we can install from a Colorado BVAC or the Everything BVAC or any other 5-gallon bucket style vac onto a nuke. Look what happened. Right on cue, we have a swarm. We collected it with this everything BVAC, and now we've got an adapter plate to put it into a nuke. You couldn't do that before. Although sometimes for me it does work that I just take the bucket, shake a few bees inside, or put a few bees inside, and then they'll just go in on their own. But with the adapter plate, we know that we kind of lock them in there. And if it happened late in the day, for example, you could leave that on overnight. And then the bees are moving in and uh, then we'll pull this off and see what's going on underneath. So most of the bees are in. We're establishing a nuke and then of course we'll just put the bucket down in front again in direct contact with the hive because it makes it easier. They can fly of course but uh, this just makes that transition easier plus I put the adapter plate against the other side of the hive in direct contact also and now we're going to put an insulated uh, barrier in here. And what do you think I'm going to use? Double bubble. Reflect text, whatever you want to call it. Of course, I'm trying to do this while I'm holding the camera with my left hand and moving this on with my right hand. A little bit frustrating. Obviously, you're going to do a much better job, but it pushes the bees out of the way. And then you can just put a migratory cover over the top of that. And we'll have ourselves a hive of bees. Simple as can be. So there it is. The rest of the bees are in the bucket. We'll find their way into the nucleus hive. And we all be, will be set and ready to do it again. So it's not a perfect system. You have to have some patience. But I think I'm on track here with a decent adapter plate. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. The bees are all doing great now. And I hope you uh, maybe got some ideas of your own. Thanks for watching. <laughs>